So today I'm going to show you how to rescue a dried up tube of gouache. Oh, that one's not dried up. So what you're going to need is a tube of paint that's dried up. Now, this technique I'm going to show you now only works with gouache and watercolor. It does not work with oil or acrylic. If you have tubes of oil or acrylic that are already dried out, uh, there's not much you can do. However, if you've got dried up gouache or have dried up watercolor, you can do this. So what I've got here is a pan I've already transferred. So I did this one last night. Um, so this is what it's gonna look like. So this is called a full pan. You can also get a half pan, which is just half. It's about that big. And what these are, these are refillable pans. You can order them on Amazon. You can get them at Dick Blick, wherever. Uh, and you can buy them empty like this. And so if you have a nicer watercolor set, you'll see that typically, um, you can take a pan out and you can put a new pan in like this. And you can just replace one color in the pan, right? So if you have a set like this and you're like, oh, I'm out of this fluorescent red, you can just buy a fluorescent red and replace it. And you can see here, I'm gonna need a new blue here pretty soon. So it allows you to customize a palette, which is really nice. And you can see here, this is my Karan Dash travel palette. This is my favorite. I use this all the time. And what I did with this palette was I obviously took these cremers out of their original packaging and put them in here. But I also took these and I put magnets on the back. So that way I could just pop them in here like this and I can actually put my brushes and other tools in here and I have this nice compact little system. So other things I have, I have a, tri a dried up tube of permanent green deep, an X-Acto knife, be careful with these, a dropper, a pair of scissors, a really clean thing of water, uh, an old brush with a metal back. I'll show you how I'm gonna use that in a minute. <clears throat> an empty plastic cup. So first things first, let's cut open our paint tube. So I'm gonna just take the lid off and you can see, man, that is in there, that is dry. So I do as much as I can with the scissors. It's just safer. Nobody wants to get an X-Acto knife cut during a pandemic and I have had my share, believe it or not. Anybody who works with X-Acto Nice is eventually gonna get cut. So you just wanna open it open on the bottom, cut it open on the bottom like this and kind of pop open the tube. And first thing I'm gonna do is just gonna, actually I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna pop any small bits into a container. Then I'm gonna cut along the side as far as I can and just peel this open. So see that? Look at all that paint. Now this is really expensive paint, this whole bind. So I'm definitely gonna wanna save this and use it again. So gouache and watercolor paint, um, these paints are resoluble, which means once they dry, you can re-wet them. Uh, so if you have some of these pans, which are really cheap, you can buy the, they're, like I have a big bag of them that I got on Amazon for like 10 bucks. You can also take a perfectly wet tube of paint like this and just squeeze it in there and make a pan. So if you have a bunch of tubes and you wanna go on a trip after the pandemic's over and take a little painting kit with you, a really easy thing to do is just convert your tubes into a travel set by uh, buying an empty pallet case. You can use an Altoid tin, you can use anything and just filling up these little cheapy pans. It's a nice little hack, because those travel watercolor kits are very expensive. Uh, and if you have taken a watercolor class at school, chances are your teacher had you purchase tubes. Right, so if you have tubes and you wanna convert them, you can do that. Okay, so I have almost, I'm gonna take my little knife here and just scrape out these last bits. Try not to be, don't be too forceful with it because like I said, you don't wanna slice yourself with an X-Acto knife. Okay, so you can see now I have green fingers and I have all of this, you know, pretty chunky paint in here, which I wanna put it in this little thing. So already you can see if I do this, this is maybe not gonna work so great. What I like to do is, you, now you can use anything for this. I'm just using this pencil because it has a metal back on it and this little cup. Probably the best thing to use would be a, a cooking mortar and, mortar and pestle, 
but I only have one and I actually use it for cooking, so I'm not gonna use it to smush paint. But you can do that. You can see I'm just, what I'm doing now is just pulverizing this into some pieces. And once I have these chopped up pretty good, I mean, I could take this all the way down to powder again if I ha if I was using a mortar pestle or if I just want to sit here for a very long time and just keep pounding this paint into little, littler and littler crumbs. So you can see now I have this really nice powdery green paint. I'm going to take it now and I'm just going to put it in this pan. And actually what's happening here is I have a little more paint than I have room in this pan. So I'm going to do two and fill a second pan. This is another reason why I like to smash it up first because it really is a lot easier to see how much you really have. I'll take a brush and... Okay, so now you might be asking yourself, well, it's all gonna fall out and get all over the place. That's true, unless you take your very clean water. I have a little dropper. So these, you can actually buy these at the art supply store because people use these little droppers for stuff like this. Or you can get one of these, <clears throat> just any old medicine dropper, just clean it out. You could try to pour the water in there, but if you miss or if you pour too much, um, you're gonna have a big mess. So the reason I'm rewetting it is just to kind of glue it all back together. Put kind of just enough to make this resoluble. And you can actually take a brush. Let me take a little brush here. And just mix it a little bit in there like this. Look at that. Looks like I've got myself a brand new pan of deep green from Holbein. Actually, I have two pans, whole pans of deep green. That, that tube was not full when it dried up. Sorry, I mean, making videos is not like my thing. I'm only doing these because I have to teach online now and show students how to do stuff. Like typically I would be just doing this in the classroom and show the students how to do it. But here I am in a pandemic in my studio and I don't really know how to make videos. So I end up doing things like, look, do it like this. And I put my hand over it. So sorry. Hopefully move around enough that I'm not like a total failure. At making videos okay so that is dry and you can see this one I got kind of lazy and I didn't smoosh it up a lot because it all fit in there and now I kind of wish I had smooshed it a little bit better but whatever this will totally work it's not gonna fall out of there um, so I have a bunch more tubes here to do so I'm gonna spend a couple hours finishing up uh, all of these rescues of dried up tubes of paint so I hope this helps if you're on a budget this is a really fantastic way to use up that paint that otherwise might get thrown in the trash. All right, happy painting.